Okay then, so the first thing I'd like to do is attach an event listener to this card div right here, a click event listener, so that when we click on that card, it toggles another class which will be flipped and then we can use that class to style the card to show either the front or the back later. So let me go to the index.js file to do this. We need a constant, we'll call it card and we set it equal to documents dot, oh, we need to spell this correctly, documents dot query selector and this is going to be the div with a class of card. Okay, so let's take that card and add an events listener to it, which will be a click event. And when that occurs, we fire a function. And inside that function, we just want to take our card, get the class list, and we want to toggle a particular class, and that will be flipped. So let's check this out in a browser. If I inspect this, we should see, if I click on it, see this element over here, this one? If I click on this, it gets a class of flipped, yep. And if I click again, it takes that class away, awesome. So now we have that conditional class and we can go ahead and start styling the card based on that class. First of all, I want to apply some very, very simple styles. So I've got this little comment down here for the solution. And what I'd like to do first of all is just style the front and back of the card. So let's go back over here and do that. So what we'll do is grab both the front and the back at once and style them together because there's gonna be a lot of common styles for these. The first thing we wanna do is position this absolutely. So position absolute, and that's absolutely relative to the parent element card because that's position relative. Now the default values for its position are gonna be zero and zero in the top left. We don't have to manually type those out. So next I will say the width of this is 100% of the parent and the height is 100% of the parent as well. So 300 pixels for both. Then what I'll do is say the background color of the front and the back is gonna be 222, which is a dark gray. We'll also apply a border radius, which is gonna be eight pixels to soften those corners. A border as well, which is gonna be two pixels solid and white, so FFF. And then after that, the cursor is going to be pointer. So if we take a look at this, should start to look a little bit better. Awesome, now I want this text to appear down here. And by the way, we're only seeing one of the cards now. Well, we're just seeing the back of the card and not the front. And the reason we're just seeing the back is because they're on top of each other now because we position them both absolutely. So they stack on top of each other. And because this comes after this one in the document, this one has a higher stacking order by default. So it shows on top of the front. Anyway, what I'd like to do is position the text for both of these in the middle down here. Now there's a little trick we can use to do this, and that is to display these as flex, first of all, because then we can say that the flex direction is going to be in the column, so going down, and then we can use justify content to say center, and that will put it in the center of the card. So if we take a look now, we can see it's in the middle, awesome. All right, so now we've done that. Next, I want to maybe show the front by default instead of the back. Now, the way we're gonna do this is by rotating the back so that we can't see it and instead we see the front. So let me quickly show you this. I'm gonna come down here and say, okay, I want to grab now just the back and the color of this, first of all, of this text will be like a goldy color just to distinguish it a little bit. So DB and then CA and then 6C, save that and preview. Now we can see we've got a gold color for this text. Then I will say transform, and it will be a rotate around the Y axis. Now the Y axis is the axis going up and down, so this way like that. So if we rotate around that, it's gonna look like it's flipping. So for example, if I rotate it by 25 degrees, you'll see a very slight flip it actually just looks like it's getting squashed but it is flipping around that y axis but you can see the front of the card underneath it now so what we need to do is take it all the way to 180 degrees to turn it around now when we do that look at what happens well we just see the back of the back of the card if that makes sense so we see ninja fledgling but a mirror image of this because it's flipped 180 degrees so essentially we're seeing the back of the back. Does that make sense? And we don't want to see the back of the back. Now what we can do is hide this using a property called backface visibility. So if we set that to hidden, 
whenever an element is rotated 180 degrees, then we don't see it because it's hidden when we see the back face. So now we should just see, yep, the front underneath because this is turned 180 degrees. If we change this to zero again, then because we're not showing the back, it will be visible, but we are showing the back when we say 180 degrees. So it's hidden and we see the front of the card underneath. Awesome. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is react to that conditional class. Remember, when we click on this card, we want to turn it around. Now, if we take a look at this card, when we click on this, it's toggling that flipped class. Now we want to style it differently when we have that flipped class because we want to show the back of the card, don't we? That other promo code instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to just paste in this and it says, okay, when the card has a class of flipped, then I want to transform and it's going to rotate around the Y direction, the whole card this is, so not just the front or back. Remember the back is already rotated 180 degrees. So the whole card is going to be rotated by 180 degrees. And also what I want to do is come up here and select the card itself, even without the flipped class. So all of the time, and we want to apply a transition property to the transform, which is what we just specified right here. And we want it to be over 0.5 seconds. And that's so it doesn't just rotate like a snap without any kind of animation. We want a transition so it looks nice over 0.5 seconds. So let me save this and come back over here. Now watch what happens when I click on this. Well, I click on that and now we just see the back of the front of the card. Now remember, for the back of the card, we said for back face visibility, it's gonna be hidden. So when we rotate the back, we don't see it. However, we don't do that on the front and we're not actually rotating the front when we click on the card, we're rotating the card itself. So even if we applied this to the front, it wouldn't work. And it's not gonna work if we apply it to the card itself. Oops, let me undo that. If we took this thing right here and applied it to the card, that's not gonna work either because then we would only ever see the front of the card, right? So we can't do it right here either. So the way we get around this is by using a property called transform style and we set that to preserve 3D and that will sort it out for us. So now this should work. And if we click on this, we're gonna see the back and then we see the front, then we see the back and the front. So this is working but it doesn't yet look fully 3D. Now the way we can combat this is by using a perspective property on whatever the parent of this element is. Now the parent of that element is the section right here. So I could take the section and I could apply a property of perspective and we would set that to a number. I like to use something around 900 pixels. Now, if I save this, when I click on this, it's gonna look a little more 3D because we have that perspective. So click on it and that looks a little bit better, right? Awesome, it's all working. Now, the bigger this number, so if I do something like 5,000, then the smaller the 3D effect is gonna be and it's barely noticeable there. Still quite good, but barely noticeable. If I go up to 10,000, it's gonna be less of an effect. Now, if I go something really low, like 100, it's gonna be a really, exaggerated 3D effect like that, which we don't wanna do. So I like to go somewhere in the middle ground. I like about 900 pixels, and then we get that nice 3D effect. Awesome, so there we go, my friends. That is the solution. So hopefully you managed to do this as well. It doesn't have to be the way that I did it. It could have been entirely your own way. If you've got a different way, feel free to share your solution down below in the comments.